welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to test two different case and cooling solutions for the Raspberry Pi 5. Specifically, we're going to look at the Geek Pi, the 52 Pi heatsink case, which should provide an excellent passive cooling solution. And we're also going to test out the official Raspberry Pi 5 case, which can be configured for cooling in several different ways. This means we've got quite a few tests to run, so let's go and get started. Right, here we have the stars of our show. Firstly, what's sold as the Geek Pi heatsink case for Raspberry Pi 5, although here it's branded as 52 Pi. I've never understood the relationship between Geek Pi and 52 Pi, but regardless, I paid £15.99 for this on Amazon Co UK, and it currently sells for $14.99 on 52pi.com. And then over here, we've got the official Raspberry Pi 5 case, which sells for about $10 or £10, and includes a fan and a heatsink, as we will see. And right now, my Raspberry Pi 5, which is here, hello Raspberry Pi 5, this is fitted with the official Raspberry Pi 5 active cooler, which costs about £5 or $5. And because this is currently fitted to my Pi 5, we're going to start our tests in this video with this, the official Raspberry Pi 5 case. So let's get this open. Very, very simple, like uh, that. And in here we've got the case, which is in red and white, although you can get a version in a grey and black. And as you might be able to see, there's a ventilation gap around the top of this case, and you can take off the very top. I can do that like that. And you can see here we've got the fan, which is over the pie, obviously to keep it cool. And if we take the whole thing apart like that, very easy. Fantastic piece of plastic engineering. This Everything just clips together. And we can see inside here we've got a little container, a little envelope with... There we are. Those look like... Uh, oh, those are feet, aren't they? Those are feet for the case to go on down here, and this is a, a little heat sink clearly for the Pi. Clearly a much smaller heat sink than you get with the, the official active cooler. So the idea is that the Pi would go in here, it will clip in like that and you put this top on, but you can't do that with this fan fitted. But what you can do, which I think is pretty good, you can take this bit out, I can just get this right. How do I do that? Do it correctly like that. This can go on here like that, and there we are. We've got a Pi 5 in the official case, with the official active cooler. And this is clearly the most cooling you can get in this case, particularly if you leave the top off. So what we're going to do is first of all test the Pi in the official case with the official active cooler, and we'll test it with the top. Um, let's test it with the top on first like that, shall we? That's the uh, first solution. And then we can test it with the top off as well. And then when we've done that, we will take off the official active cooler and fit this back in the case, connect it up, the right way around, of course, put this little heatsink on and we'll test that as well. But this is going to be our first test, so let's put the top back on. I've got it the right way around. I've got it the wrong way around. No, I haven't. This is the right way around. I know what I'm doing, honestly. There we are. So let's get this connected up like that and go across to the Raspberry Pi OS desktop, where, as you can see, I've got my Raspberry Pi 5 temperature test script, which basically runs a 10 cycle loop. It takes a temperature measurement, and then it uses Sysbench to stress out the CPU cores on the Pi for 120 seconds, two minutes, and then finally it takes a final temperature measurement. So this is a 20 minute stress test taking temperature measurements every two minutes. And if we just close it down, I've got a terminal open to run it, so let's run the test. There we are, it started out. I've had the Pi idling along for about five minutes at the start of this test, as I will do for all the tests here, and as we can see, it was idling at about 47 degrees. But let's now use the magic of filmmaking to fast forward. And there we are, the test has finished, with the Pi stabilising at 64.8 degrees. Very respectable, no issues with that. So let's take these results and put them across onto a table where as you can see, we've already got the results from when I tested the Pi with the active cooler outside of the case, both with and without the fan. And as we would expect, the Pi is running slightly hotter inside a case, although not dramatically so, although still I now want to run the test with the Pi fitted with the active cooler in the official case, but with the top removed. And here we are back on my desktop sometime later, 
The price had a chance to cool down and it's been running at idle for about 10 minutes. So let's run the test. And there we are, it's finished. So let's put the results across onto our table where as expected, they're very similar to the results obtained with the active cooler and fan not in a case. Although I do find it strange how the results bound around a little bit, slightly up and down. I guess there are variations in the accuracy of the sensor at different points of time, maybe thermal dissipation patterns alter, whatever it is. We can certainly conclude that the official case used with the official active cooler, top on or top off, provides a very good cooling solution. Greetings! I've now removed the active cooler, as we can see, and I've fitted the teeny weeny heatsink, which I think is called Michael, and I've also connected up the fan that comes with the case, so we can put the uh, top back on the official case. So now we've got the uh, official case standard configuration, what you get straight out of the box. And I think for our first test, we'll test it with the top on, so I'll put the top on like that. I do like the way this case goes together. And something else I like about this case is that they designed it so that the little cover down here, which allows you to see the LED on the Pi, can also be used to uh, press the switch. So if we press the switch like that, and uh, there we are, it might be able to see that it's just gone green, but uh, whether you can see or not, it has gone green. And if we go across to the Pi's desktop, which by the magic of filmmaking has been idling for about 10 minutes, we can uh, run this test. There we go. We can see that our idle temperature is a bit higher than we've seen previously, but uh, having noted that, we will now speed on through the next 20 minutes. And there we are, it's finished. So let's put the results across onto our table, where we can see that the Pi has been running in this test only slightly warmer than when using the active cooler in the official case. However, it is worth noting that fan noise with the official case's own fan rather than the one on the active cooler is significantly greater. After a couple of minutes in this test, you could hear the fan whirring, well, quite significantly. And each time the Pi hit 67 degrees, fan noise became quite significant. And clearly the fan was going much faster, cooling things down as we can see in the results. But uh, personally, what I've learned from this particular test is that it is far quieter to use the official active cooler in the Raspberry Pi 5 official case, rather than the, the fan and the small heatsink that come with the case. Anyway, let's remove the top of the case for our final test of the official case. And in fact, doing this makes me wonder about why we have more fan noise with the fan mounted on the official case rather than the fan on the official active cooler. And it may well be, I guess, because the fan in the official case, it's actually mounted on the case. It's just clipped into the plastic, it holds very well, but it means it has no sort of acoustic insulation from the pipe. Whereas the fan on the official active cooler, the contact with this unit with the pipe is via these thick heat pads and via a couple of push pins. So there's a lot less opportunity for noise to go through and make things vibrate. Maybe that's why you get more noise using the, the, the fan actually fitted in the case. I don't know. Anyway, let's go back across to the Pi's desktop, which again, by the magic of filmmaking, we're seeing considerably later and after the Pi has been idling for about 10 minutes. And there we are, it's finished. So let's put these results across onto our table, where as expected, they are slightly better. The Pi is running slightly cooler than when we had the top on the case. And I can also report that the fan noise is considerably less with the top of the case. And whilst this test has been running, I've been thinking about the fact that some of the variations in the results we see earlier on, almost certainly due to the fact that the active coolers fan is uh, speeding up and slowing down, but it's impossible to tell because the active cooler is so quiet. Whereas in the tests using the fan supplied with the standard case, it's very obvious when the fan is speeding up or slowing down. And when the fan is speeding up, this clearly explains why sometimes the temperature falls. Anyway, we've now finished testing all of our scenarios that involve a fan. So let's move on to our totally passive cooling solution. Right, shall we open up 
our heat sink case. I think that's a good idea. And uh, exciting which is going to be. We're looking forward to opening this. Come out, come out. Here it is. We've got some instructions and uh, everything in a little bag. And in the bag we find, there we are, that's the top piece. This is a set of uh, thermal pads and obviously bolts and even a little allen key to put them in with. And this is the, uh, the base piece. So I guess we're going to start with uh, these. We need to first of all put these thermal pads onto the pie. So let's do that. There we go. That's rather a, a fiddly operation. And clearly the top's going to fit on on top of it like this. But I've learned putting these cases together over the years. One of the ways to make it easier is to bring in the base through which I've already uh, threaded the bolts, as you can see, to bring that in and to put the pie on top of that like that. And this will help us with the registration of the top. That's the idea anyway. So let's just try and put this in place like uh, that. Yes, I could feel that register. I won't be able to hold all the bolts in place, I imagine, or maybe I will. Oh, wow, that works rather well. So we can now set to work with uh, Alan the key. There we are. And uh, yes, that seems to be a good solid construction. It's gone onto the pie very well. I do like these heat sink cases. Although I would note here, if you want to use a camera on the Pi using one of its two MIPI connectors on, on the Pi 5, the, uh, the hole here for letting out the cable is right in the middle of the two connectors. There's the hole right there and there's the connectors and that would be difficult to get the cable out there and you certainly couldn't attach the cable or get, take, take it off again with, the, with this actually fitted. And similarly, the PCIe connector down here you know, you're not really going to be using that with this case, I don't think. So this is a case to be using with everything but the, the MIPI and the PCI connector. But uh, that said, it'll work for our purposes here. So uh, let's uh, connect it up like this. And if we go across to our desktop, which has been idling for a good 10 minutes and run the test, we can see that our idle temperature is very good, the lowest we've seen so far with this very large heatsink. So let's once again compress minutes to seconds. And there we are, it's finished. And at the end, our heatsink case has got pleasantly warm to touch, not impossibly hot to touch. So let's put our data onto our table, where clearly the results are not as good as solutions with a fan, although the results here are better when we use the active coolers heatsink with, with no fan in, in an earlier test. And of course, we don't know if the heatsink has yet saturated, but still, it's a good result. And for those of you who like graphical data representation, here is a graph of all our results, some of the lines overlapping in places, but uh, it certainly gives us a reasonable pictorial representation of the results of our tests. So there we are. We've tested two very good case and cooling solutions for the Raspberry Pi 5. Although my own main learning point at the end of all of these tests is once again to conclude how good this is, the official active cooler for the Raspberry Pi 5. When I first tested the Raspberry Pi 5, I said that this is the best 30mm fan, temperature controlled fan and heatsink unit I'd ever tested on a single board computer. And that remains the case. It's a good cooler, but it's also very, very quiet indeed. And whilst, as we've seen in this video, this doesn't come with the official case, it can be used in the official case in place of the fan and the heatsink that come with that case. When I set out to make this video, my big expectation was at the end I'd be saying the best cooling solution, case and cooling solution for a Pi 5 is to use a heatsink case like the GeekPi. But whilst the GeekPi is very good, that's not my conclusion. My conclusion is the best solution is to use the official Raspberry Pi 5 case with the official active cooler, which together cost the same as the GeekPi case, but give you more flexibility because you can access all the connectors very easily, just taking the top off. And in effect, this is a silent cooling solution. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, Please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.